what is going on guys this is remdog speaking level one gaming and we're here to bring you something that we think is really cool and it is our second time doing it our annual brawl holla review and what that means is we like to do a annual review of brawlhalla you know there's not a lot of love that gets into some of the free play free to play games we you know we like to keep it as a fiscal year and review everything that you know brawlhalla has done everything in terms of content tournaments community um pretty much all of it and we'll break them down section by section and then give you our overall impressions we could obviously tell you that um brawlhalla has had a rocky start of the year and was able to kind of come back a bit strong but let's get through some of these by category and then talk through everything that had going on so if you even need a refresher here it is as you're checking out this video make sure you check out the description below we're going to be putting chapters in the video everything from the the legends the crossovers the battle passes events patches future updates and our overall score is how we're going to be breaking things down and you could definitely check that out below in the description jump to your favorite chapter being that this will be a part one and part two check out which video will have the content that you're looking for uh, but definitely check out the whole thing you'll not want to miss what we're talking about okay first up on our list of content categories is the battle passes uh brawlhalla actually started off the year in january with a battle pass they teased it in bcx of 2021 it was going to be something having to do with space we find out it's the galactic war or the battle really between orion and artemis begins so what you have is um, a bunch of different items obviously if people don't know what the battle passes do they give you everything from a progression skin progressive podium an epic skin you get at the very end tons of items skins for all the weapons three skins for characters and then emotes emojis and everything else um, emojis being the newest thing in there uh, titles and a bunch of other cool items like colors and stuff like that so how do we feel overall about the battle pass well the progressive skin of artemis was really cool it was actually the first um, time that uh, there's animation within the skin itself which you can find on the final tier of that artemis skin which is really cool um, and then you have the epic skin being the orion skin uh, that was also included in that in, t in the track the very end of the pass which was a really dope orion prime epic skin um he you know the weapons are cool his animation's cool he's like you know our only biggest problem with that was that you know we don't know if we want you know bmg and rohala to get used to the fact that like uh making the epic skins for characters as like their epic version because then you're just looking at the regular version like oh this is like the tier one version and then the epic skin is their ultimate version which orion prime is like the ultimate version of orion pretty much uh instead of something probably slightly different um the concept goes here and there it's like a double-edged sword we like it because it looks awesome you get it and whatever but it's like i'm never going back to the base skin if i'm ever gonna use this skin it's gonna be my epic skin for that so that's how that kind of works all the other items were cool the three other skins um for the characters were cool uh we liked you know some of the the emotes and stuff that happened to and even some of the avatars and stuff so the progressive podium was probably one of the hardest podiums that you can honestly get in any pass which is you have to uh you have to get ranked wins and by the last tier you have to get 300 rank which is pretty crazy but like any like the progressive stuff you get to keep them over the past so you could cut you can end up doing this over time and then eventually get it whether it's one year two years you know months whatever um you can uh end up getting it at some point uh so overall we really liked the galactic war paddle pass all right next we have battle pass season six enter the fang wild now we knew something like this was probably going to come um they obviously introduced the character just a couple of months before that and it's really cool that they kind of just then went into that being that we know you know just enough about the fang wild um and what was interesting about this battle pass is just a few things they introduced one being that they introduced animation in backgrounds which you know some of the community has been asking about uh so that was really cool very subtle stuff uh in that background that they made the stage for and the stage design looks really cool but onto the battle pass you have um the obvious which is you know your your progressive skins um that you get in the beginning and then you have your everything from your emotes emojis 
um, avatars, all of that. So how we, we rank things. The Elder Wild Ragnar progression skin is a really cool skin. Every tier kind of looks slightly different from each other. So you could definitely use those. Uh, but you could definitely tell which one's a base and which one is the final tier. Uh, the final tier of that has a lot of animation. So it's really cool. The weapon looks cool. Has a different take on like Ragnar. So he's like a forest dragon uh, type of thing. And then the epic skin being uh, Fang. Fang Wild's Heart Ember Epic Skin. And like we mentioned previously, this is like the final form of Ember. Hell of you, if you hear the trailer, that's exactly what they say. So, you know, I guess BMG might be treating Epic Skins, you know, and these battle passes as like the final form of something versus like a different take. Um, we actually love it. I mean, I loved the Fang Wild Heart Ember Skin Epic Skin. So, uh, really dope skin. Animation of the weapons looks cool. Uh, she just looks really cool in general. Um, the other the other skins look um, pretty decent as well. You know, I'm not a big fan of the Scarlet skin almost at all. I'm not even really sure about it, but um, everything else looks fine. I mean, the emojis you can do. There's none that has like a buddy emote and they look like they started to take that kind of stuff away or they just don't have it in this past. But all the other ones are pretty, pretty decent with... Uh, some of the islands being decent the weapon skins themselves too they look really similar to what you received in the first uh the viewership reward for 2021 for esports stuff so you know there's some similarity there uh, in my opinion but they still look pretty cool um and you know there's obviously it's like a different take of those kinds of weapons anyway so all the items look uh, pretty good on this one this one was a pretty solid battle pass so normally the way it falls is that Brawlhalla usually has the battle passes fall somewhere kind of in the middle with a giant space in between the battle passes, which usually make it fall that there's only like really two. Uh, but this year, you know, there was a you know big enough gap where, and they did it right away where they were going to now bring back the cl classic battle pass. The first battle pass being that it's been about two years uh, since that's come out and they wanted to reintroduce it with some new items obviously they made with every battle pass they kind of introduced something slightly a little bit more new um and this being that there was emojis now and then obviously a new weapon at the time um that it came afterward so they brought back return to demon island um as a classic battle pass being the first battle pass um and what you got there is you know just the, the the first the first that made everything possible and in my opinion probably the best in terms of skins um and then what things look like overall um the emojis were solid for that always um the the skins are some of the best skins that you would get for the three characters that's there and the progression skin being that preto progression skin and the akuma no kogo hatori uh being the epic skin uh both solid um you know really got takes i feel like that stuff has gotten better over time but i think the base the, the skins that you get across the battle pass are much better there was a sense in the community that like well you know this is something that was supposed to be exclusive it came back um obviously you know they try to make it that there is just a percentage of people that get all the items or play through the battle pass in general uh but i want to say that that's really more of the fluctuation between real player usage versus like the overall player base of Brawlhalla. Uh, without that, with, with that said, you know it's not like that Brawlhalla didn't know that. So they actually did something cool, which was to get reward people that had the previous battle pass by you know if you completed it or wherever you were at, you got all the other items automatically. So there was nothing to complete there, and then um, you also got rewarded with you know having done it originally. You got titles since titles were introduced later. Um, you got specific titles for that, and then you got a specific title um for having it and from just having it and then having beat it if you did that initially versus even um titles that were new for now or whatever so obviously there is still exclusive items that you could have gotten or you could get if you just had it from before and you got on and you just decided to play a little bit or whatever it just unlocked all that stuff for you so that's really cool for uh brawlhalla and bmg to have noted um and like i said before there's only a certain amount of people that also have that stuff now we could see that they do this in the future um we really would just love that uh brawlhalla in general just gave us like three battle passes in the year i don't think that's too much i think there there are a bunch of people that there are a bunch of companies that do four so literally if um 
if a battle pass is three to four months they turn it over right away and they get to the new one i wanted that that way initially i can honestly say that that probably doesn't need to do that and i would have fatigue and burn out anyway and i probably wouldn't complete all of them uh but three is a good number i feel like you get a just you know they have a couple of months like two or so and then they can just dive into the next one and then have like three or four months into that one but three probably leaves you with enough time to have it four months to complete and then you kind of just roll over until a couple weeks into the next one so we wish they did that so but we can see them doing something like this in the future where they start to reintroduce older battle passes with newer content hell they came out with this and it's pretty much absolutely being that there are battle boots that have released uh, just a couple of weeks ago so uh, that is something to keep in mind uh, as we move forward over the years and new battle passes come in but overall this was a stronger year than most for battle passes being that they technically had you playing three different times trying to complete something whether it was trying to get the completionist for the return to demon island or the two new other ones uh, we could see them doing this in the future, and it's not as bad of a process, so uh, we'd like to see this keep up. Now, here we're going to have a really juicy one. Now we're going to get onto the topic of the new legends that happened this year. And, um, you know, there was a decent amount of variety and an introduction of a new weapon. So, without further ado, I'd like to kick it off with, obviously, what they teased last year at BCX, uh, being that someone's going to be, you know, of the fang wild and stuff like that or you know the royalty of the fang wild and that was um arcadia she is the fairy queen and she is great sword spear so uh, she has a decent amount of versatility uh with her moveset and stuff like that you know being that she has like this cool little beetle that comes out um from a side sick uh with the spear and um her main her main thing uh, for both weapons is that she has like this sort of trap move um really cool overall character um i'm not the biggest on the trap um or you know the trap move or whatever i don't see the biggest case use for to have it i understand why it kind of exists uh but it doesn't it doesn't work you know exactly the same like yumiko's does that pulls you forward to yourself and that's what this move should do a little bit more than just kind of have you like float a bit um so even as i play with uh, you know against other people and stuff like that i don't see it used all that often so it's just kind of a miss on that one uh she is also the fourth great sword legend so i'm not gonna see great sword for a good bit now <laughs> being that they introduced four um you know across the two years that you know, it was initially introduced uh but overall really cool character uh to have on the roster and she was introduced uh early in the year uh sometime in march so Circling right back to what, you know, we previously kind of mentioned before, which was, you know, while Ezio could be considered a crossover, he actually was introduced as a new legend in Brawlhalla. Really awesome. Um, probably one of the ones that was not expected. And it is one of the characters that kind of, you know, turned things around in terms of like having really cool legends in the game. Um, I feel like. You know that we have a, we had a decent amount of variety in legends over the years but i haven't had i haven't seen a really cool legend since either petra or even jay yun uh for that matter being the introduction of the great sword so Ezio kind of does that for me um his his three different skins are really cool the game being a different timeline in assassin's creed they obviously introduced also whatever crossover during that event which was avr and we mentioned that before uh his moveset is is really dope um being an orb and sword character um this makes it the fifth orb character i think there is in the game and um just overall like pretty cool variety of like being able to like pull you over into sort of the small like trap thing that can be used either for combos or knocks you through you know knocks you over the stage if you're over the stage or in you know in the vicinity of the air or something like that really cool animation on him as well and you know he's the second character that's obviously a ubisoft property being in Brawlhalla, first one being raymond and that was introduced nearly like four years ago so really cool to see this and we'd like to con see this continue the trend in the future last but not least was not only the introduction of, of a new legend that was going to appear at the end of the year but a new weapon finally in the world of brahala which we have not seen for about two and a half years uh this being battle boots a uh, long long fan request uh really cool in terms of everything um they showed it off at bcx which we were able to try and then they revealed the legend which is tesca tesca is battle boots gauntlets now i was furthest from 
thinking that they were going to introduce a, a gauntlets boots legend which since that was also the biggest request in the game i thought they were going to just kind of leave the fans hungry with a bunch of different setups until you got there and knew that was the main event but being the overall character and how the luchador um you know and tesca is it makes the most sense to for him to be that type of legend um, really cool boot set animations look really dope battle boots being introduced that was really it's really cool uh being this was you know it came out in december um the skins also you know some of them are okay you know i'm not a big fan of like the the one that he just kind of has the suit and then even shell to be completely honest um i think that's just kind of like a miss in terms of maybe even introducing that as a separate character that could have been battle boot something else or gauntlets and something else um the whole like having like an alternate kind of character that has like a separate lock animations the character still ends up kind of a little basic in terms of like what they look like uh uh, so it kind of just gives you like it's almost like two and a half skins in my opinion same thing was done with munin and and hugan um if i'm saying that right you know that's that's also a different lock animation they're supposed to be sisters but the other one just kind of looks a little bit like like a like a different take of munin it's not like a completely different kind of skin so we'd like to see variety obviously when the character comes out and then there's just opportunity to just them come out as like people that are kind of facing each other we don't see that often and i feel like orion and artemis are like the closest in terms of like they have a rivalry they look kind of you know very space like and they you know they they're fighting each other that's sort of like ryu and ken thing it, you know it kind of you kind of miss it if they do things where they're just like oh i'm just gonna like they're just gonna like add a skin of the same character instead of just making like a actual promising rivalry of someone else that's in there it could be their sister it could be anything so they kind of look like them but they have an entirely different moveset and they have like a different look when it comes to their skins which i think that would be work better but there are tons of characters in the game overall so while people have said that they wanted up more legends introduced in the game i think four is a good sweet spot to have they've had five at one year at one time and that was probably too much as they've mentioned but um three is you know there's it's a little you know sporadic you know it's not the worst but i think four uh, would be a really solid number to keep it at so but you know being that they introduced a new weapon still a solid take of having all the legends and two being tesca and i'd say Ezio. um those are really strong takes and legends for the year so that's really promising now we wanted to jump into uh something that's been happening since the very beginning of brahalla and that's their events their seasonal events that happen throughout the year now brahalla has actually added a number of events um over the course of different years and obviously come different items for those years so to not waste time or anything else i'd just like to say that this had the most events out of any year obviously that number is always going to increase but it had actually eight events uh which is pretty wild because i remember there was a time when there was like only four or uh, four or five events or even less um so to have eight events is pretty crazy with the cool variety of like timed things that you can get so let's jump right into it the valentine's day event uh that's the valentine's uh 2022 i actually introduced two new skins this uh this one this time around matchmaker vector and celestis yumiko two uh cool looking skins this whole event in general you know lends itself to you know very vibrant colors you know flowers um you know valentine's day kite suits and stuff like that the event overall has some really interesting skins i like some of them and then some of them are not i'm not too big on but it has like a good variety of different types of skins um to utilize so they all kind of actually look cool in their own way the introduction of these two new skins are more on the floral and like you know cupid-esque side versus anything else um but really cool obviously they always have like a podium that's introduced this podium is really cool with the two dolphins and they always bring back that cupid's bow um as a you know timed event kind of thing uh the love struck colors not big on those you know they they're bright and pink i get it you know for anyone that actually does like that stuff but not a huge fan and then obviously they have avatars and stuff we're wondering you know as the years go by that they're going to add more things but this is what they had this time around all right this one is the luck of the brawl 2022 event um they have it uh they've had it for a couple of years and the skins for that is uh, pretty interesting we actually really like a lot of the skins that are on here um but this one's sort of just like they i feel like they kind of tacked on with a lot of the things that they were working on to kind of just throw it out there so the real only thing that they added was the dragon heart isaiah while he was the only skin that was added that wasn't really 
much added after that. It is a really cool skin. Um, we, you know, I I ended up getting it myself. Um, and then they have like the KO effect. That's just like a like a bag of money kind of thing. And then they have their avatars. Uh, the colors are actually pretty cool themselves. I like the Lucky Clove colors. Uh, they work on a bunch of different characters in, in the way that I like. And um, interestingly enough, uh, you, you know, being that this was a, you know, thing where it's like kind of gold coins thing. This is also when they introduced like the gold refund. So that was also very interesting. So you were just raining in, in Rohala gold if that was the case, if you had bought in like any of the Legends packs. Uh, regardless, uh, this was a small event, so nothing too crazy here, um, and hopefully they just expand on this in the future. So this is the second annual Bloom Hollow 22 event uh, that, you know, they introduced this last year with two skins coming from Zol and Jayun. Um, we really like those skins, and so they bought in uh, the Honey Beano, and, which was a Reno skin, and the Green Thumb Limfei, which is also a Limfei skin, if it's not yeah know from the name uh i'm not a huge fan of the two skins that they added reno you know it's cool that they he had as an event skin uh which is like some sort of beekeeper kind of thing and then lin fei is just kind of like a gardener this is her like i don't know how many other ones that she has i just know that she has like a back to school one uh but uh, we like the idea of this event being introduced, being last year. Uh, you know, they obviously have the avatars that they added, which are just okay. And then they have a cool little uh, podium, Floris Bliss, and this was like an updated one from last year. So uh, really cool on that. Um, the colors being new to the Verdant Bloom. Uh, you know, it depends on, you know, how they look. They're also like a somewhat of a darker kind of pink, like a violet type color and um you know a different shade and stuff like that so uh it's cool that they you know they added this event and we're just looking forward to having more skins in this one in the future all right this has become somewhat of a classic at this point heat wave uh returns uh, you know in the summer so you know there's a good plethora of skins already that are in this game but with the two new skins that they introduced was braxy jones being the type of pirate type of, of rack skin and then deep sea lucian which has a cool effect that the helmet kind of has water uh, within it so that's a decent pretty that's a pretty decent skin um the overall event is is pretty interesting i'm not the hugest fan of this one just because the 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 skins either get really summer or very beachy and you know i guess like they, they kind of look out of their element and kind of just look like they're hanging out for people that are into that that's cool i like things on a little bit of the the you know the edgier cooler side and i feel like the atlantean orion is probably like the best skin that they have which was a uh, you know subsequent uh coincidentally one of the first skins and even hot shot mechter is really cool i ended up getting that skin a while ago so hopefully they just kind of play with you know the different types of varieties within the summer event because there are many that they can take they, they could take advantage of um the podiums actually like you know sometimes hit and miss they go with the same type of like eagle face you know like cave type theme or whatever so uh this one's a refresh of that Heatwave colors are probably some of the worst colors, in my opinion, that uh, that are in the game. I mean, they give you variety because that's also very important in a game like we're all being a lot of different colors and a lot of different colors that have been introduced background and even on the characters. So it is, you know, something that can just be used to, I, you know, quickly identify versus anything else. But the overall like washed out type of RNG yellow colors not a huge fan of uh but it is just one of those things that's like in the game you know they're always gonna have it in for that event it should be different and for those that like it like it uh the ko effect is also like a hot lava type thing it kind of resembles the the collector's edition like actual ko effect as well so you know not too many things there if you have that one i wouldn't really necessarily go out of my way to get that um avatars uh you know and we'll see probably see more things in the future like emojis and stuff now what we have here is one of the better events in my opinion and that really mainly has to do with the colors it is the back to school event um this has been going on for a good couple of years they have a real good plethora of different skins um you know so the thing that they added on this one is brawl dog mordex uh which makes them look like a you know mascot bulldog and Odin uh Jiro which is just like a, a cool cat kind of Jiro from like probably it looks seems like a like a Japanese type school and stuff like that 
Uh, really, I like both of them. Uh, the Brawl Dog Mordex, I always like it when, you know, they take on, like, a different form or shape or anything. So it turns, you know, the wolf aesthetic into, like, just, like, a bulldog. Uh, so really cool, like, you know, skins on that end. I'm not a huge fan of the overall skin collection. Um, you know, I like the bit, I like the take of the Rocker Volkov because he also is of, like, a completely different age. So one could say in lore standard that that is a younger version of Volkov. Uh, but everyone else kind of has like this whole interesting like back to school type look. Uh, the colors though, you know, the, the back to school colors is probably, home team colors are probably the best in any event in my opinion that have been in the game for years. Um, you know, there's actually a little bit more of a steeper competition as more events pop out and even more colors pop out but this is something that has always been really cool to me. The avatar, the avatars doodles. Um, and the Brawlhalla 101 is actually cool avatars as well. Um, so the overall event I think is really cool. I always look forward to getting this, you know, to for this time to come around and then me getting, you know, the colors that I have not get. The also the other thing that they introduced was a new emote, which was the home team cheer. Um, so you have the pom poms that kind of jump up and down, which we can see more of them doing uh, for other events as they come along. This one is probably my favorite event of the year, which is the Brawl Halloween event that happens every year. This has been going on for a good number of years. There's a ton of different skins for that in a bunch of different varieties. This year, they introduced Mad Doctor Olgram, um, which, you know, kind of has that Mad Doctor look. Sort of the first, like, epic skin that came out before for Scarlet, uh, which she has, like, a Mad Scientist type look, too. Um, and then Termin Gator onyx which has a really cool like you know half cybernetic you know feel and look to him with a animated cannon as well um really always love this event because of the variety of different skins they also look really sharp and really cool give you a different aesthetic of the characters we you know and then even the colors are really good on this one as well i love the change in the podium that happens every year and the last like two years has been more of a you know like day of the dead type thing versus like a graveyard type thing that's happened they have the ko effect which is the jack-o-lantern the haunting colors i love this is probably one of the best events and they also even added an emote which is the skeleton dance had to hop on that one for that uh really cool event overall they know it you know everybody else knows it this is one of the biggest events that they have during the year and they just keep adding really cool stuff to it so always looking forward to it and they did not disappoint this year Okay, so Brawlhalla reintroduces the anniversary event. This anniversary event has was first introduced two years ago. Um, they were out with it last year, and now it is the seventh anniversary of Brawlhalla. So it is deemed that kind of event, uh, star-studded, uh, you know, where they have skins, where the characters are in suits or anything else, or looking really like cool and proper, almost white tie kind of. Uh, so. You know, they introduce colors and they're just going to keep adding things from there, you know, with the podium and stuff. But what you have this year are two new skins, Gothic Chick Nyx, uh, which really looks uh, which looks cool. And then the Honorable Sir Roland skin, which has him in a suit. And I feel like I've seen something like that before, but he also looks kind of like, you know, slightly different take. So not too bad given the per per the difference in the event, the podium. Um, the Gilded Deco 2022 podium is also really cool looking. It looks like an epic version of like the standard skin that uh, the standard podium that's in the game. So uh, very cool. And it's always cool that they refresh it. They have the seventh anniversary cake emotes. Um, they started off with the fifth anniversary, had one last year, and it's always like a different kind of cake. This one I think is a red velvet cake, which is some of my favorite type of cake, so I'm really with it. Uh, and the gala colors, the gala colors being this like kind of super dark blue, you know, in white kind of color. Uh, I like the co I like the color. The color works on a lot of different skins, so that's also really awesome. It also happens at the same around the same time as like BCX and stuff like that. So it's really cool to look forward for that event and then also the anniversary event that happens. Last but not least, the Brawl Holidays event that happens every year around Christmas time. And it's really crazy being that they introduced so much, um, you know, just a week prior. They still had to come out with uh, the Brawl Holidays event 
uh, that happens every year and I'm really glad to see it come back. Um, they added Diamond Jack Caspian, so a Caspian skin, and Snowdrift Jayun, uh, which is also like a cute looking skin or whatever. Um, there's a lot of variety in the different skins that they have. I like I do like a decent amount of them. They just look like very different from each other. Everything from like the snowman core um, to the Krampus cross. And then you have like the very holiday looking skins or whatever. Love all the different types of skins. This is probably like my second favorite event. Um, I'm not huge on the colors that happen though, uh, which are the winter holiday colors. They work on some, but to me, they don't work on all of them or whatever they do have a ko effect though which is the frostbite which happens which is also kind of cool winter daggers that get reintroduced at you know avatars that are also reintroduced and they also have a refresh of the podium this is a winter wonderland uh 2022 podium so that's also really cool to experience and this is the thing that just came out so you know this overall becomes a very big year for i feel like events for brawlhalla being that they had eight different events uh, but we only like to see either more or more content within each of them it's just you know something that kind of drives the train and we like to see it happen we'd like to see more even happen across them things that they would add like emojis um and stuff and i think that we will see more of that happening um, you know, feeling that like look of the draw, look of the brawl was probably the weakest event of the year. Um, it's something that just kind of needed to return, and so they just kind of came out with it. But hopefully, there's a little bit more focus and care on some of the events that they have. But they do have a lot, so there is a lot to look forward to. So this is part one of our Brahalla 22 annual review. Uh, stay tuned for part two, which is happening pretty soon, either today or tomorrow to get the rest of the content out the door. Uh, let us know what you think. Comment if you agree, disagree, things you'd like to see Brahalla add. Um, and overall how you feel like and subscribe for more content and stay tuned to the next one.